Hey y'all. Well, I wanted to do a little Q&A session on some comments that were left in the last video, which I super appreciate. Man, you guys just flooded the comments of the last video. And some of y'all made some really good points. And then I want to answer some questions. I also got some emails about this AMP2 or what I'm thinking about doing. And I want to kind of explain and also answer some questions and give a little update on maybe some things we'll do a little different in response to some of your questions and comments. So one of the questions that was asked several times is, why aren't you doing like a 45 amp? Why don't you do a 300B amp? And guys, that might be something that I do in the future, but both of those are more complex kind of amplifiers to produce. They require expensive tubes that are made from very limited sources nowadays. Same thing with the 2A3. There's just not a lot of people making those kinds of tubes. And it's just a, to me, a more niche market that's like, you gotta like triode tubes, you gotta need low power, or you know, with a 300B, it's a little more power. It is a more limited market product, and it would also have to be at a lot higher price point. And from what I've seen, trying to find really good sounding 300B tubes that are reasonably priced, just is, they're running out of options. The 300B-Z tubes sound nice, but they're no longer in production. And I can't design and build an amp based on tubes that are no longer in production and I don't know how much longer the stock's going to hold out and if the stock that's left or seconds or what's going on with that because they haven't been made in years and so you know that's one thing against that you know to use something like the electroharmonics 300b tubes I just don't think those sound good you know I haven't played with the JJ's or some of these other folks that are making you know the PS Vane ones to me don't sound good or at least the ones that come in those Wilsonton amps don't sound good and so you know trying to put something like that on the market is just not something I think is a first amp is a good idea to do and like I said these little JJ EL 34 L's sound fantastic they're easy to get they're going to be making them for a long time because there's so many guitar amps that use these tubes that there's no way they're going to stop producing these. Same with a 5AR4, super common rectifier that's used in tons of different equipment. And the same with the 12AX7. Now, somebody asked, you know, why don't you use a 12AT7? Well, that's not off the table, but I know that 12AX7 is a more common tube. You can also use 7025s which are a low noise replacement for a 12AX7 that have a little less power, but will plug into the same circuit. The other thing to take into consideration is the gain on a 12AX7 is more, and so the input sensitivity will be lower, and there's probably a lot of people that are going to try to drive this thing with a patch cord to their cell phone or something like that, which the amp can't have real low input sensitivity and still be able to make the rated power off of a low signal like that. And so I want to make sure that the input sensitivity is high enough where even for a, you know, maybe a DAC that's built into a turntable that isn't real high output, we'll still be able to work with the amp. And so I think we're going to stick with a high gain front end tube like that. Another comment someone made was about the volume control and the quality of the volume control and you're going to be using a stepped attenuator and all that kind of stuff. And that gets back to how available are those things and where can I source something like a stepped attenuator that I can get regularly or by, you know, if I design the circuit around it, that I can keep getting them and that they're not crazy expensive. So I'm probably going to go with either just the basic, you know, Blue Velvet Alps. I may end up using an audio note pot, but that's probably going to be the options. And I'm not sure which I'm going to go with or if I'm going to make that an optional choice that you can pick one or the other because there's a pretty big price point difference between the two. The other thing is I'm 
considering making the amp as just a power amp as the base model. We're like, here's the one at the bottom price, and it just comes with some RCA jacks because I know a lot of you guys run a preamp, and you're going to want some kind of preamp input, or you know, the one that you buy is going to need that. And in that case, it's probably important that there is no volume control and you're just hooking your preamp straight to it. You don't want a volume control. And then have a second option or a, you know added cost option of what the pot and stuff's going to cost to have maybe a volume control. And if you get the volume control, have a you know two RCA jack switch on the top of it where you can switch between two different sources. And maybe the preamp version, the RCA jacks are up here in the front next to the signal tube so you have the shortest signal path and less likely of picking up noise because more than likely folks running a preamp are going to be concerned about that kind of stuff and they don't mind some cables running from up here over to their preamp. And then for you folks that want to use a volume control, and I've heard, I hear you guys out there that say you want the RCA jacks on the back because they're more convenient and you don't think it makes any difference. Well, maybe have that available too. Because if I'm getting the chassis fabricated, the main parts that are complicated to fabricate are the tube socket holes, the transformer mounting points, and the holes for them. All the holes for things like the speaker outputs. And if I'm going to use one of these kind of transformers, the cutout at the top of the chassis for the transformer to sit through. All that kind of stuff is the stuff that takes a long time to fabricate. Drilling a hole for the volume control that may be optional. Or, you know, drilling the RCA jacks in the front versus the back. Those kind of options wouldn't be hard to add later as part of a ordering process. And so... I got to think through all of that. I mean, I do look at the way the back of this amp's laid out. Let me kind of show you. And I do have the speaker outputs over here to the side, away from the power cord. And so if I added RCA jacks, where am I going to put them? I'm going to move these over closer to the high voltage AC and then put the RCA jacks over here on the side. And then is there room to put four of them over here and not have these speaker jacks right over here underneath this transformer? And is that a good idea? You know, those, those are all questions. And I don't want to sacrifice performance or have to deal with, um, oh, all the ones that have a volume control and the switchable RCA inputs, you know, have more noise or, you know, and then have people returning them because those make noise when... I know it's more likely that they will. And I know the folks that are saying, oh, it doesn't make any difference. You know, they're not the ones that are probably going to be using 105 decibel speakers that might pick up that noise. And I have to build these for every use case, not just for specific uses. And I guess what I would say for the folks that want like a bunch of different RCA jack inputs that maybe you use a switch box with it instead of having that integrated into the amplifier itself and possibly causing performance problems. Now I have built one of these with the RCA jacks in the back or one pair of them and it seemed to be fine but I also wasn't using it with super high efficiency speakers so maybe that would be the option would be if you get it preamp only it's got the RCA jacks in the front here or on top next to the input tube. And then if you get a volume control, you get one pair of RCA jacks in the back. And then you guys can figure out your switch box because there'll never be enough input jacks in the back to please everybody. And honestly, I just swap the cables. That's one of the reasons I like them here on the side because they're easy to get to. I just unplug these two, plug the other two in. It doesn't take that much longer than walking over the amp and flipping a switch on it. And so, yeah, there's that. The other thing I got some emails about people saying, is there going to be a remote control? No, this, that's not, I'm not putting all that into here. That's just too much added complication. Another thing to go wrong, to have people want to return the amp because the remote quits working and all that. Just, yeah, no, we're not doing that. 
trying to think of what other questions came up. Oh yeah, on the transformers and the iron that's going to be used. I've got quotes coming in from Thermionic Labs on a pair of, they, they're rated at 20 watt output transformers that are 3.5K primary, and they do have a 4 and an 8 ohm secondary, which they did say due to the size of the transformer versus the output that we're going to be asking from it, that they don't see a problem having those two options. So I think, you know, having a 4 and an 8 ohm tap should cover just about any use case. And then the other one that I'm looking at that ISO Tango makes, it's a FC12, I think it's called, same deal, it's got a 4 and 8 ohm tap into a 3.5K primary, which are potted, and I want to try both of them. I don't know what the delta is in the price between the two. And then on the power transformer and the choke, I've had good luck using Hammond stuff, but Hammond doesn't make a laydown one that's easily available. This 290DAX is expensive. It was made to replace a specific guitar amplifier transformer. And I had a hard time even sourcing two of these. And so I'm not going to use those. If I did go with Hammond, it would be an upright and then an upright choke. But again, Thermionic Labs is working me up a quote on power transformer and a choke combo to use in all of these. But I also may see if ISO Tango be willing to either make some to my spec or what they would cost. And again, what's the delta between the two? I feel like that the quality of the output transformers in a highly filtered single ended amp like I do with my power supplies you're not going to hear this iron as much as you're going to hear this iron. You're definitely going to hear the output transformers. I just don't think that, you know, the rectifier tube and the choke of the power supply are going to make that much difference. I do want to use a tube rectifier. I like the slow warm up that a 5AR4 gives an amp where it lets the heaters kind of get the tubes all hot for the B plus hits and it pulls the B plus up slowly. I think It'll help keep the tubes lasting longer. And also, I think there's a whole subset of people that just want a tube rectifier. And I think that would be a checkbox that if it didn't have one, might turn some people off. So not doing solid state rectification. We're going to use a tube rectifier. I think that was kind of the whole list that people were talking about. One thing I am going to try to do on the one that I build, it's not going to have these screws on the top of it. I've kind of figured out how to do that. The other thing that i got to try to figure out is how I'm going to do the cathode resistors. I really like having them top mounted like this so that the heat rejection isn't inside the chassis itself. But what I may end up doing is mounting them underneath and somehow figure out a way to put just some ventilation holes in the back here. You know, may try to figure out how to put a little screen or I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do the heat management for the cathode resistors. These don't get super hot, but they do put out some heat. Heat kills electrolytic caps. We are going to be using some electrolytic caps, so there's that. Oh, and while we're on the subject of caps, possibly going to have the caps optional as far as which ones you can choose from. I know some people like MyFlex. Some people like, you know, specific Mundorfs. Some people like Jupiter Caps. And I don't want to, like, pre-pick what you like. If you know what you like, we can put them in it. I'm sure we can work out something, too. If y'all, you know, when you order it, say, hey, I want to mail you the caps that I want to use as far as the coupling caps, and I'll be happy to put whatever you want in your amp. On the other caps in the amp, somebody sent me a message about, oh, you need to use film caps for everything or use these DC, D, whatever, DC links and all. I'm not doing all that. We're just using nice electrolytic caps. We're going to use audio note bypass caps on the cathodes of the output tubes. 
and that's it. I'm not going to get into using you know a bunch of boutique caps through the whole amplifier. That's just too cost prohibitive, and you know I can't have it where you change it up too much. Like I said, I'm going to design it. I think where I've had a tag strip and a tag strip that the coupling caps go between so that if you as the end user want to change out the coupling caps that they're on their own little tag strip points that will make it easy for you to unsolder and solder in whichever ones you want and I may just do that option instead of having a whole variety of different caps so I can order just you know 10 or 20 of some certain kind put those in the amps and then if you want to DIY go in and swap those out hey that's up to you you know just be careful when you're out there working on it so anyway that's just kind of a Q&A answer I know some folks do like live stream videos I'm just I can't see myself doing that kind of format I don't have anybody to monitor the chat and unfortunately there's some just absolutely horrible human beings out in the world that would probably blow my chat up with a bunch of crazy stuff talking politics and whatever that you know I don't want to get into all that so we'll be doing this kind of Q&A format in the future on different things when there's a lot of comments or questions and feel free to send me any questions to my new email, steffi at skunkydesigns.com. I'll put that in the description. Thank you all for watching my videos and for all your support. I feel like that there's enough folks out there that are interested in this thing for me to pursue it. So it's probably going to be next year. I know some of you guys are like, I want it tomorrow. Yeah, that's not happening. It's going to take me a while to even put together the prototype. I'm going to have to do some research on the different transformers. I want to audition it. I want to make sure when this thing goes out into the world that it's right, that it sounds good, and that everybody's going to be happy with it. So anyway, that's it for this video. And until the next time, have a nice day.